Hey everybody, this is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we check out functions dealing with the domain and the range. We're in the Common Core Math Standard of Functions and we're going to be defining, evaluating, and comparing functions today, especially that beginning step of what on earth is a function, what's a domain, what's a range, and that thing. All right, our guiding question is what is the domain and range of a function? So you'll be able to answer that by the end of the lesson today, all right? Not too bad. Well, here is what I call the meat grinder. This is a machine that we put something in, namely x. We throw that x in there. It goes through this little equation, and it spits out y. So if you think about it, you put something in, x is the input, and what spits out is y. So if we put a number in, put a 5 in here, 5 is replaced by x, or you put x in get rid of that, put a 5 there, and it's 2 times 5 plus 1. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Y is 11. What spits out but 11? Put in 5, you get 11, and so forth, okay? So that's the idea. Let's talk about what domain and range is. All right, first of all, let's talk about what a function is. What on earth is a function? This is about the only time f there's fun in math. You know, all my students always ask me, are we going to have fun today? And I said, yes, of course, because we're talking about functions. All right, function, what is it? It's a relationship. You get an input value, and it spits out one output value. Basic, basic thing, okay? So if you have an equation where you take one number, put it in, and it spits out one value. Something that wouldn't be a function would be if you put one number in and two numbers spit out, okay? Say that last equation, I put in a 5, well, it spits out 11, and it spits out a 12. Okay, that's not a function, all right? A domain, domain is really easy. It's just the x values, okay? It's what you put into the equation. It's that input, okay? The domain are those x values that you put in to the equation, and you can imagine what the range is. The range is all the output. Range is the y values. It's what spits out. It's that you put in the meat and what spits out but that ground beef. Okay? Y is what spits out. And then the other thing we want to talk about is what is a function form. Typically when we talk about functions, they're going to be in one specific form, and that's called function form. And it's going to be y equals something. You're going to have to solve it for y. So it'll be y on the left side, and then everything else on the right side. Okay, this is called function form. So if you're ever asked to write something in function form, namely an equation, it's going to look like that, y equals something, okay? Like this. X's are domain, that's what goes in. Y is our range. If you want to think about it, X comes before Y, so does D. D comes before R in the alphabet. Domain comes before range. That's how I remember it. Domain is the X, put it in. This is function form, and then Y is the range. That's what spits out. Okay? So, every equation pretty much that you've looked at so far has been a function. An exception would be something like this, where X equals 3. That's not a function, okay? That wouldn't be a function because each x value has more than one y value. All right, let's talk about this. We've got the number of adult tickets sold and the number of child tickets sold. Well, here the example is you bought zero adult tickets and eight kids. You sent eight kids to the theater all by themselves. Crazy. Or there was one lucky adult with six kids, two adults and four kids, three adults and two kids, and four adults, no kids allowed. All right, so that's the idea here. What is the domain of this function? What is the domain of this function? Well, remember, the domain is just the x. So if we're going to write it, it's going to be 0, comma 1, comma 2, comma 3, comma 4. All right, let's do that. And you use these funky little brackets. Pretty hard to draw at first. There we go. Domain, one, two, three, and four. That's the domain. And then you can guess we're going to talk about the range now. Remember, the domain is just the x values. You write it something like that. Now, notice I didn't put like zero through four, right? I didn't put zero through four because did you buy half an adult ticket? No, you can't buy half of a ticket. 
Okay, let's, what's, what's the range then? Remember the range is the y value. So put the r there in the funky brackets. We have 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Notice that I put it in numerical order, at least the greatest. 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. It's, that's how it's made, but if we were to graph it, it's going to be 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Okay. All right, and then can you write an equation for this function? Can you write an equation with it? It'd have to be in function form. It would be something to do with x and y. Okay, notice that at y is 8, x is 0. So when x is 0, y is 8, if you think about it. So right here, this, when x is 0, that goes away, right? and you're left with 8. So you're going to have adding 8. Now what's the change? As x increases by 1, y increases, or actually rather decreases by 2. Decreases by 2, decreases by 2, decreases by 2. Increases by 1. So we could say that it's negative 2x plus 8. Let's try it. Take that 0, plug it in. This goes away and you have 8. That's good. Take the 1, plug it in for x, negative 2 times 1, which is negative 2, plus 8, it's 6, and then plug in 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, plus 8 is positive 4, looks like we got it. And then you were going to graph this function. With this, you simply just make a graph, probably in just everything in quadrant 1 there, you're going to make a graph, and then what you would do is you would just say, hey, my first point is at 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, at 0, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. And then my second point is at 1, 6. And then my third point is at 2, 4. My third point is at 3, 2. And then there we go. So then that is my line like that. Okay? That's the graph of this function. All I did was take the x values here and the y values make this a point. So my first point was just 0, 8. My second point was 1, 6. Third point was 2, 4, and so on. And then I just graph those. Now technically, putting a line there is incorrect, isn't it? Because you can't have anything in between. So technically, if we we're going to draw this, let's draw it again, you would have 2, 4, 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Your first point is going to be at 0, 8. Second point is at 1, 6, 2, 4, 3, 2, and this is my graph, just like that, okay? Because you can't buy half of a ticket, right? It's just going to be like that. All right. Here's what it looks like. All right. Let's go through these now. Write this equation in function form and find the domain and range. Get negative 4x plus 2y equals 12. I want you to write this in function form. Remember, you've got to get everything away from the y. You're using SADMAP. If you remember how to use SADMAP, we're going to take and add and subtract first and then multiply and divide to get rid of everything away from the y. All right. Well, let's do that. If we're going to get rid of everything away from the y. First thing we're going to do is try to get rid of this minus 4x. So let's do that. We're going to add 4x to both sides. Okay, so these guys go away. And now we're left with 2y equals 12. So then we're going to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Our new equation is y equals 2x plus 6. Okay, that's in function form. It's the same equation as we originally had. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to find the domain. Well, remember what the domain is? Just the x values. So our x values are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's find the range. We're going to take negative 2, plug it in, and then tell me what the y is. So take negative 2 instead of writing x, write negative 2, and it becomes y equals 2 times negative 2 plus 6. That becomes negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. Take negative 1 for x now, 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2 plus 6 is 4, put 0 in, 0 times 2 is 0, plus 6, 
and six. Notice the pattern. Every time you go up one, up one, up one, up one, you go up two, up one, up two. So our next number should be eight. Next number should be 10. You can check it if you'd like. So what's your range? The range is going to be two, four, six, eight, and 10. Right? All right, let's try this one. Find the domain and range of this equation. Here is your domain. Tell me what the range is. Remember, all you're doing is taking those input values, the domain values of x, plugging them in, and figuring out what spits out to y. Here they are. Okay. Notice the pattern here. Negative 3 goes up 2, up 2, up 2, up 2. Notice where there's a 2 in the equation. There's a 2 here. This is how much every value goes up from y. And this is where you start at 0, is negative 5. So this is how much you go up each time in the y, and that's where you start. All right. You should do these on your own. Find the domain and range of those two equations there. And then can you find the domain and range from a graph? This is the domain and the range. This is the function. Fill it in here with the domain and range. Remember, domain is the x values. The range is the y values. Typically, we write it in least the greatest order for the x, but the y values will definitely change. So here, my first x value is 1. My first y value is 9. So you'd write a 1 there and a 9 there. This next one is 3, and this one is 7. So you'd put a 3 there and a 7 there. Got the idea? Ready for the hints? Here they are. All right, how you doing? Kind of get the idea of what a domain and range are? I bet you are, not too bad, huh? Pretty easy. Well, that was it as we talked about functions, the domain and range, wrapping it up. Are you able to answer this question now? What is the domain and what is the range? I bet you are. Well, that's it for today. This is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems or on Twitter at Matt's Math. And enjoy math and ground beef.